Oliver, did you get what you needed? Oh my god. I just got doxxed by TF2 administrator and GLaDOS at the same time. But how does I even get to meet her? How were the recent TF2 voice actor shoots set up? And the risk of being too self-indulgent, how does it feel as a TF2 player? What could go wrong? I'll be taking you through every single day of the shoot and our processes. One morning while I was saving the last couple of minutes before getting up for work, Shork called saying he was going to be flying to Boston to film with the voice actors and I pretty much screamed in excitement. I was so happy that his hard community work was opening up so much for him. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Meeting the voice actors for the game we've been playing for over a decade, have built our channels on and even met each other through seven years ago. However, it would be a leap of faith. Shork has the money to go to the shoot, but was betting on the content doing well enough to be able to cover the trip. So he needed everything to go perfectly and professionally. I don't know how to pick up sandwich oh sandwich no 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 or he'll be completely fucked over i may have not been recording wait no you didn't you i may have not Can we what's going on i mentioned that i was thinking of getting a cinema camera myself and i didn't want to intrude but if he needed camera support i would of course love to help as it's somewhat similar to what i do for work currently he said that it would be great and the dates were locked in in just under a month there was a great chance to make some truly unique and special tf2 content a lot needed to be planned and i researched and ordered all the gear as soon as i could but before we'd even flown out that responsibility may have already been messed up it was two days before my flight and my camera had been held hostage in UK customs for 13 days. Two separate gimbals were not working, the lens I ordered had been stolen in the mail and replaced with the ugliest green dress on planet earth, its replacement was the wrong one and I had to meet a random stranger at night one day before the flight to get the real one. I'd wasted over a thousand pounds which I had no idea if I was going to get back but for this trip I was willing to risk it. I wasn't just risking my own money though but Shork's leap of faith, his opportunity and the actual content itself. I just had to pack all the gear, get on the plane and hope for the best. As the plane took off, as seen in this obligatory takeoff shot that always looks awful on video and never does anything justice, I kept trying to value how crazy it was that this was actually happening, because I was still in stress mode from the camera and work, it just wasn't really hitting properly. Even when that's acknowledged itself, it's very easy to instantly find something else to stress over. I thought about how when Shork, OK Fellow and I were much smaller, we always said that we just liked making videos together, and if we grow, we can grow together. For a long while, a few years ago, when we were both smaller, I had quite a few more subscribers than Shork, and sure, we collabed a lot and supported each other, and maybe that helped him a little, but this time is an astronomical difference. I wondered if the sentiment is still the same despite the contrast or if it's just leeching off of his success. I hate stupid thoughts like that, but I knew for certain I was just happy that so many years later we could still make stuff together. That night I met up with Shork, Orange Glazer, Roar, and Cyber, and we had a pretty chill night, everyone was tired really. I slept in the creepiest fucking basement I've ever seen though, and I was half expecting to wake up to see Pyramid Head hitting the fucking gritty. I woke up the next morning with a grape sized lump on the back of my leg and veins looking like Gatorade. Medic saw me and I ended up being fine so I don't want to dwell on that because this video isn't about me but yeah a weird start to the trip if you do want to know more I spoke about it on the Chuck on Us podcast. Hey can we talk about how Orison was died? <laughs> <laughs> Not much was scheduled for Thursday we met some TF2 cosplayers got some pictures of the voice actors and signings and explored the convention. It was packed with hundreds of TF2 fans so I didn't even introduce myself to the actors it was just super cool to meet everyone in real life hang out and talk about YouTube and the TF2 scene which was amplified again when we met Great Blue, The Watt and his friend Vernon. It was just super nice to be around these guys who were funny as fuck, TF2 players and also loved making content. A really unique atmosphere and energy with everyone's similar interest, mindsets and excitement behind the merge between the voice actors and the TF2 community. Watching and interacting with so many TF2 fans was no less than surreal. Of course not all TF2 players are convention people, but it was such a weird experience seeing so many TF2 fans in real life as real people walking around not just steam profiles with legs. Conventions are just peculiar though, like it's so positive to see so many people sharing similar interests and it's great that people who feel like they don't fit into more conventional spaces have their own. This is probably the best day of my life, I've gotten to beat a bunch of nerds who really like my, the, the game and have cosplayed. That being said, I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that the demographic conventions pool has its issues and it's maybe too accepting. PAX literally had to have signs everywhere reminding people not to punch each other and to wash their hands. But why was I even thinking about this so much though, I should just be grateful that I was there. Uh, but I'm just starting to understand what kind of universe you guys have created, yeah. which is so welcoming and so much fun. And you can, how you can step outside the normie world of chaos and consternation and hatred and whatever and come here and live in a different universe, which is, you know, just um, ideal, idyllic. So I, I'm, I'm pleased to be a part of it. And I have you to thank for that, so. 
Friday was more signings with Balloonicorn vinyl giveaways to cosplayers as well. I still hadn't spoken to the voice actors yet though, they were busy with hundreds of fans and didn't need an extra one trying to have an Oris televisuals bonding experience. The day lasted forever though, it was a blur, there were so many TF2 fans going around packs and it was just fascinating with so much going on everywhere. Literal holograms, ridiculous games marketing, competitive Pac-Man, wildlife. Though, despite this, and though I was meeting even more TF2 creators in a similar way to how I've dreamed of since before starting YouTube, I wasn't expecting to have a feeling of not being fully lucid or present and not really feeling alive. Try some more! When I was younger, YouTube is a way to escape this. You can present the best side of yourself, the most confident side, and the more you succeed, the more of reality you can acknowledge that side as being you. This can obviously lead to some self-centered behavior and inflated self-worth. When I was 16, I spoke about this occurring commonly during the rise of online creators in a college video essay about covering yourself online. And now, I was guessing that that's why so many vain, narcissistic people love social media. It's true to an extent, and it doesn't have to be negative if you are self-actualizing. You can meet people who you connect to more and align with your values, life aims, and interests, which is incredibly fulfilling. But it was humbling to fully acknowledge that I wouldn't randomly become a chat around people who happen to know me through YouTube just because because I'd accidentally related to any success on YouTube to my confidence or self-worth previously. I now know what it's like to be schizophrenic. That night we watched Emesis Blue, some Spiky Mikey, and went on a TF2 YouTuber marathon before falling asleep. Saturday was the day of the TF2 voice actor panel mediated by Shork. Like, holy shit, he's literally just on stage in front of a hundred thousand bazillion people. Hax gave us a room to prepare before going on stage, and soon after, the voice actors entered. But I had to focus on getting the camera set up, as I still hadn't had much practice, so didn't get a chance to say hello. They were all scattered around the room anyway, so it would have felt very forced. Robin Atkin Downs did come up to me to talk right before everyone was walking up onto the panel though, which was super kind of him. We made our way backstage, and Orange and I hunted down the best spots to get good alternate angles for the panel, in case the pack Vod wasn't working. The panel was full of great moments of live voice acting, answering questions, and talking about their careers. Seduce me! I'm not a crazy gunman, Dad. I'm an assassin. What well, the difference being one is a job and the other's mental sickness. Let's go practice medicine. I'll leave a link to the VOD in the description. Seeing all the fans get so excited and how happy everyone was around the venue was an incredible experience. The audience turnout for this panel was astronomical and made me realize not how big the TF community is, but how active and tangible it really is. If you were to tell me back in 2007 that uh, we were going to be still interacting with the fans of this game, uh, you know, now, 2023 guys, this is crazy. We not only got together, but we also have a TF2 update, right? Because of this. Update, update, update. Despite shutting stereotypes, lots of people were sociable and had high energy. Was it the excitement in the air, atmosphere in the event, or do people really simply enjoy existing this much and socialize naturally normally? Like recently, I feel quick-witted once every so often and then have nothing to contribute most of the rest of the time, or at least don't feel like a driving need to. People hire you not because they know what they want you to do, they want you to do something wonderful right away and tell them what they want. So uh, I would say learn how to improvise. But I'm here, luckily, to help make something that hundreds of thousands of people will enjoy. It isn't about me, so why am I so fixated on my state of mind and cognition? I'm going to be performing um, live singing at another con very, very soon. I think like two weeks of freaking out. So I was just wondering if you had any cool advice for me so I stopped freaking out as bad. I suggest that you have a particular person in mind and you're trying to help them. You're trying to bring them to themselves. Because if I were going to sing, this was a triumph and I'd just sing it to you, Kelly, just to tell you that you've been a terrible test subject. You have no but, idea how many years I've waited to hear that, by the way. But, but you see, Kelly, everybody else wouldn't matter to me. If you are focused on the person that you are singing to, that you are telling everything to, that's your job. You don't have to worry about anything else because that person is everybody. We actually kept bumping into Ellen across the weekend and she was extremely kind and outgoing every single time. She remembered both the usernames and government names of me and Orange Glazer without fail, which is extremely impressive because I struggle to remember one person's name if they tell it to me three times. She's all around just very uplifting and clearly always wants to put in a lot of effort when speaking to anyone, which is just, honestly, I just respect it so much. After the panel, some interviewers asked the voice actors some behind the scenes questions. We tried to help out and film it for them, but most of the files were damaged aside from this clip. Someone took Shork's bag with his passport and signed merch for a charity 
charity event, and while looking for it, we got to look in the behind the scenes rooms, where they keep all the stuff for the stools, and the pack staff member let us keep these cool little alien dudes. I don't even remember if we found the bag to be honest, just, just look at this little guy. At night, we finally found a backdrop for the set, and rehearsed for the main shoot in the Five Nights at Freddy's basement. <laughs> now all we had to do is not mess up. I may have not been recording. After about 3 hours I burst out of a hypersleep pod at Orgon's cafe. At 6am we left for packs with Xenus PC setup and the rest of the gear. It was finally time. We had to watch a Skillshare course on social engineering to get through pack security with everything on the precarious metal cart, but soon everything was set up and ready to go. I then had the opportunity to speak to the actors as they came in one by one to film. They were all so kind yet very professional and sincere. No one really wanted to force anything so it was just natural conversation. I just hope they enjoyed the shoot as much as we did. I can't say how grateful I am to have the pleasure of working on it. I was extremely tired and jet lagged but took every chance I got to appreciate what was happening. We were in the same room with the TF2 voice actors making content that had never been seen before. I was less than a meter away of the cast, saying lines that sound exactly like the characters that I'd been hearing for over half of my life. It was a truly magical moment and no one could stop themselves from smiling. And even though for some reason I still didn't feel super grounded or present, it was a glaring message to appreciate that this was a temporary moment and all we could do was soak it in. Everything went smoothly, the timings were perfect, the voice actors' faces were lighting up from interaction interacting with loving fans, and also maybe partially from panic as they realised the whole internet would be judging their keyboard skills. I'm dead! Everyone was in sync like clockwork ants, bringing nectar to the mouth of the queen and of youtube.com. Until one moment. I may have not been recording. Wait, no, you didn't. I may have not. Can we just pause? What's going on? I may have not been recording the whole time. After being the best driver in Boston, and bringing his entire PC and audio setup, a tiny slip meant that Zenith accidentally forgot to record Robin Atkin Down's microphone and gameplay for around a third of the footage. We carried on and got the rest, but had no time to reshoot. A huge chunk of one of the voice actors was essentially unusable. How is Short gonna explain why there's barely any Robin content? But if you've seen the video, you know Robin was in it, so what happened? By the grace of God, Orange Blazer and someone called Twash was able to use AI to save the audio from the other cameras. We were so much more relaxed after the main bulk was done, and I definitely felt like I had more appreciation for what had just happened, and the privilege of being able to help, and to meet everyone I had on this trip. Being around so many people proactively creating really inspired me in ways that I thought I'd lost, and made me realise that for so long I've been trying to direct my life towards these exact scenarios that I've dreamt of and it was phenomenal. I wouldn't call it a regret, but it's something I would have done different now. There was a time when I took jobs that paid the most money and gave up other jobs that would have been more creative, compelling, and just interesting to me. And so I would, I would suggest that, uh, you know, go for what you think you'll love and hope, you know, the money will come. And uh, I'd like to have done those things that I, that I passed on. As they say, I've heard it said recently, the only uh, thing you can regret at the end of your life is our chances not taken. I don't know about you guys, but I actively worry about what's going to prevent me from what I want to achieve in life as a tool to keep on track, but this anxiety is clearly excessive. I thought the trip was going to bring me some kind of external wake-up call, but it made me realise that all I have to do is fully appreciate the temporary and act proactively in the exact moment no matter what, and just be grateful that I'm existing right now. But now, I do have so much of the freedom that I was working towards all this time. I can stop obsessing about every negative thought that distracts from experiencing raw reality, especially because the raw reality is becoming the thing that I've been worrying about not reaching. And it made me realize that I don't even have that much more control than I did previously. And your control over things really does just rely on what you can do in the exact given moment. The advice the voice actors gave from decades of experience turned out to be better than I thought at the time. Like Gary Schwartz, the voice of the heavy and demo man is 70 and still working on a diverse range of many astounding projects, likely because it's his passion that fuels the dedication. So why stop? I hope that sentiment has been showcased in this video, the process of learning to respect that is what I wanted to risk being too self-indulgent for. But was the trip worth the monetary risk? Did it pay off? Only time will tell, but I'd give anything for some more Dunkin' Donuts and to hang out with all of those guys again.